Welcome to Trial Site News Beyond the Roundup series. Today we take a look at two ivermectin related stories. The first is out of Italy, another meta analysis, this time Italian led. The question is, is it time to consider the generic low cost option to help treat COVID 19? Then, EIDD 2801, the Merck drug now known as Molnupiravir, is poised to take over the $3 billion market, now going to Remdesivir. And of course, we'll discuss what's going on here. And so, from Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and the Beyond the Roundup episode starts now. Now, while the official stance of the National Institutes of Health is a neutral one, in the case of ivermectin, neither for nor against, and the FDA has recently cautioned against the use of ivermectin off-label, a group of six critical care physicians and researchers, four of whom are affiliated with the IRCCS San Rafael Scientific Institute in Milan, Italy, recently conducted a meta-analysis looking into ivermectin, and along the way asked a highly uncomfortable question as to whether suspect claims about safety for commonly available drugs are in fact driven by a deep-seated, intensive fear of failure among the scientific and medical community. The idea is that with tens of billions of dollars having been invested into a particular approach, anything that might get in the way could be deemed recognition of failure. So, in probing the ivermectin situation, the group, which includes four Italians, a Russian and Spanish doctors and researchers, identified over 45 clinical trials ongoing involving ivermectin investigations. In performing yet another ivermectin meta-analysis covering a total of 1,323 patients randomized across seven randomized controlled trials conducted in six countries, the group identified what we have been reporting on in previous meta-analyses, like those from the FLCCC and Dr. Tess Lowry, that ivermectin treatment leads to a statistically significant lower mortality rate when compared to placebo. The authors argue that while in fact ironclad evidence represents a fundamental underpinning of modern medicine, in emergency situations such as this pandemic, the use of an economical medication with a well-known safety profile, including absence of major side effects within dosage ranges, could be considered quite rational. Now, despite the urge to demand large, high-quality, randomized controlled trials, the authors declare that the existing ivermectin studies are pointing in the same direction, and that this simply cannot be ignored. After all, the vaccines are still experimental, meaning that they are authorized under emergency use authorization for precisely the conditions associated with a pandemic. Perhaps then the authors imply that the same logic could and should be applied to ivermectin. So, the authors shared a few of the studies, including the Bangladesh study where treating mild cases of SARS-CoV-2, the study used a dose of ivermectin of 12 mg for five days. The results were published in the International Journal of Infectious Diseases. They also covered the Egyptian study led by El Ghazar, A. et al., covering mild to severe COVID-19, using a dose for four days. The results are still in preprint. Yet another study led by Hashim in Iraq treated mild to severe cases with 200 micrograms to kilograms for two to three days and also available via the preprint server. Other studies included from Iran, Turkey, India, and yet another study out of Bangladesh. Now, much of the scientific world hasn't yet placed much emphasis on ivermectin studies, unless they are going to be peer-reviewed and authored in respectable medical and scientific journals. While a few groups in the UK and the USA have performed similar meta-analysis, including the aforementioned doctors Dr. Tess Lowry and Dr. Andrew Hill, as well as an anonymous group that manages a running tally called at COVID analysis, common retorts are that these studies aren't big enough. There is too much variance in design, dosage, etc. Now, all APEX research bodies, such as the National Institutes of Health, select just a few of the ivermectin studies for review, but not all of them. 
And meanwhile, the major media networks only appear to become interested and report on the drug when news is neutral at best, such as the case of a recent Cali Columbia study that revealed, at least in that case, the drug didn't have a statistical impact. Now, we here at Trialsight News believe that physicians and healthcare professionals should be looking around the world at what different medical professionals, societies, and institutes are doing in terms of COVID-19 research. After all, knowledge, my friends, is power. Now, for this next story, we're going to talk about EIDD 2801, which is the Merck drug now known as Molnupiravir that can be administered orally as a pill in an outpatient setting. Now, as we have identified here at Trial Site News, the big gap the drug companies have yet to fill with regards to COVID-19 is treatment at early onset of the SARS-CoV-2 virus during the mild to moderate stage. Instead, what most commonly happens today is folks diagnosed positive are often simply sent home most of the time with no treatment. Now there are, and we of course have covered here at trialsitenews.com, a number of outspoken physicians who do advocate off-label care. So back to Merck and the drug developed at Emory's nonprofit drug development organization, Drive, which not only appears safe, but also looks to reduce the COVID-19 infection to undetectable levels after just five days of administration, this according to recent results from a phase two clinical trial. Now, this story should come as no surprise for those avid readers on trialsitenews.com as back in July, we reported that Merck and Emory had a deal and suggested Merck was positioning to take out Gilead's remdesivir lead in the market for COVID-19 antivirals. Now, given Gilead has generated over $3 billion in revenue in less than a year, the stakes are very large. In fact, so large that we've speculated that it may have been, in fact, one of the driving reasons for Merck's aggressive stance against its own ivermectin-based product, despite the growing number of trial results showing intriguing data. Now, all of this being said, though, the current news on this drug, EIDD2801, is certainly good. What is currently needed in the market is a mix of safe and efficacious antiviral or antiviral-like medications for this coronavirus. Now, the stakes are enormous here. Many billions of dollars could be redirected from Gilead to Merck. So, a quick background on this drug for those who may be new to this story. Upon onset of the pandemic, Drive moved into action, repurposing a broad-spectrum antiviral drug it was developing targeting influenza and equine encephalitis. It was licensed to Ridgeback Biotherapeutics, and then of course Merck and Ridgeback entered into their deal. Now, as shared recently by Emory, the drug interferes with SARS-CoV-2 replication in infected patients, similar to what some experts think is happening with ivermectin. However, more data is still needed here. The Merck and Ridgeback team report results from their trial will be shared when available, and a phase two, three clinical trial is currently underway. Now, because people are not treated at home in an ambulatory or outpatient setting, some inevitably see their condition worsen. These individuals end up in inpatient and hospital settings with more severe symptoms and progressing SARS-CoV-2 conditions. This is when they are administered remdesivir and possibly monoclonal antibodies. Now, those advocating for ivermectin have done so because accumulating data reveals the potential for evidence to treat people at this early stage. Merck, having already committed to at least two proprietary pharmaceutical treatments, could not acknowledge ivermectin. And of course, we here at Trial Site News were quite critical as to their messaging. They were essentially discounting good research from investigators around the world. However, this does not take away from the huge potential Merck now faces with the results from the phase two study. A safe and effective antiviral that can be used for home care targeting COVID-19 is worth many billions of dollars per year, and Merck just may be knocking at that door. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you for being part of our audience and joining us on this episode today. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and I will see you all next time.